Today you are going to meet Harry Styles, who is energetic, strong, and playful. Mal is sociable, mellow, and sweet. Sebastian is a cuddle bug, but unique, laid back, and yet playful. Ashley tells why volunteers matter. A kitty with a rarity these days. And we take a detour at Dog Alley. All on Pick Your Next Pet at the ACAPL. So today I wanted you guys to meet Harry Styles. We may have filmed with him before, or maybe I just mentioned him before, but he's been here for a little bit now, probably at least, I, I want to say at least four months. Um, and I know, I know, he's intimidating. He's very, very strong and has absolutely no leash manners. So on leash, I mean, he's just yanking you all over the place. Bob could probably run with him, but if you're trying to walk, he's not really a walker. Well, I'll tell you what he does love. He loves to come out here to this play yard and just run around like a crazy maniac. Um, he has so much energy, you think it'll never stop, but it does. And honestly, in his kennel, when he sees somebody he knows, he's pretty well behaved. He kind of has gotten the hint that like his kennel's supposed to be the place where he rests. Unfortunately, that means he builds up so much rest over time that then when he does get out of his kennel, he can be quite a bit. But I will say, all the volunteers that have taken him off-site places say that like once he gets that initial few minutes of crazy energy out, he does settle down even on a leash. He does better on a harness, uh, but he really gets a good a lot of enjoyment of being away from the shelter. So. I would just like to thank those volunteers who have worked with him. Um, he has a favorite, his name is Dawn, so thank you Dawn if you watch these videos. Um, thank you for working with Harry, he really, really needs it. We do our best to make sure he gets play yard time every day, but that one-on-one -on -one time, the personal time, the car rides, everything like that is super beneficial to him. Uh, so as far as other dogs go, I would say he seems okay with other dogs. He gets really, really excited, so he gets like just so over the top barking and jumping uh, so you'd have to have a dog that could really handle that uh, you know so it'd be a lot of rough and tumble playing most likely if you were to have Harry around other dogs I think he'd be perfectly happy as an only dog too as long as he got plenty of playtime with his human and walks of course um, cats I could see him being a cat chaser so if either your cats are okay with that or they have lots of places to hide, their own separate space in the house, that kind of thing. That might be okay, but I could definitely see him being a cat chaser. Um, he would definitely plow right over little kids, so not on purpose not to hurt them, but he's just bull in a china shop, so watch out. Uh, again, probably older kids in my opinion, but I think a younger family who's got lots of energy and lots of time to play with him and entertain him would be great, and I do think he'll settle down once he's his backstory but I do think that he bounced around a lot as a puppy and a young dog um, when we found him he had Lorraine County dog tags but didn't go back to anybody that they said they had rehomed him um, and then a girl who works for us kind of said that she knew of a home he was in and it just sounds like he was really rehomed a lot as a young dog um, I don't think it was any fault of his own. He just has a lot of energy and he's going to require a lot of attention. So I just wanted you guys to meet him. I thought that he would play in the pools because he absolutely loves water. He loves puddles when he finds puddles. And our one volunteer took him down to the river and he loved going in the river. So I thought he'd get more excited about these pools, but maybe when we have the big one up, I'll bring him back out for you guys. Oh, this isn't that big.
is a little bit older. She's probably only about four or five, but you know our average age here is about one to two. So at four, she's a little bit older than most of our crowd here and it kind of shows. She is super laid back and mellow. I mean, even her zoomies don't really look like zoomies. Like it's just running. It's not full on zoomies anymore. Uh, but she is just an absolute sweetheart and she has been that way since the day she got here. Uh, I think my coworkers and I just knew she was going to be something special, you know. Uh, she seems very dog friendly. She did go on a group walk with us this weekend. She rode well in the car. Uh, she even let that volunteer give her a bath right after the group walk. Uh, but she did really well with all the other dogs. That group walk was really good. None of the dogs were like super crazy or jumpy or anything. So it was a good even group and she seemed to get along well with that. So I think definitely a pack with adult older dogs. I think she'd fit right in. Uh, I don't see having any issues with her with cats, although I don't know her history because she was just a stray. She is fixed. She is up to date on all her vaccines. So she is 100% ready to go. And I really do think she'd fit into almost any home. Kids, again, I haven't seen anything that causes me any concern. Although you really never know till you come and meet her and see for yourself. And I don't even have any treats on me, you guys. This is not bribery. Uh -huh. I'm not bribing her to get love. She just is that way. Sebastian is a dog that I know you guys have met before because I specifically remember trying to get a good shot of his face. But I wanted to bring him back, reintroduce him. So he has been in a foster home for the last, I believe, five months. Uh, so we know a ton more about him now than we used to. Uh, I will say he's an absolute doll. His foster mom loves him to death, but she is definitely ready because she feels he's ready. To find his forever home. She loves him but she doesn't think that she's meant to be his forever because she'd really like to continue fostering um, and maybe just in shorter spurts because having him for this long has made it very hard for her to let go. But like I said she really feels that his forever family is out there and I said that he is a special dog because he does have some special needs. So when he went to get neutered we had noticed that he was walking kind of stiff and uncomfortable and we worried that he had either hurt himself or we weren't really sure but um, he was definitely kind of like really calm lower energy dog and was walking kind of stiff so we asked that vet to give her opinion now she did not do an x-ray that day she based this on the way he was walking and, and a physical exam that she thinks that he does have some pretty severe orthopedic issues in both of his legs which may require multiple surgeries to correct um, we have not gotten x-rays and gotten like another opinion or a specific hair plan for him yet. It's definitely something we plan to do very soon, especially now that he's back from his foster home. Not that we couldn't have done it while he was in foster, but we really just wanted to get a feel of, number one, what kind of dog was he going to be in a home? Um, 
We did also find out that he has Lyme disease, which is not a super big concern to us. It's very common and it is not life threatening. It does target joints and cause pain, which is why we tested him for Lyme because that's what we originally thought it was. Um, but he's already been through his whole treatment of that. He's doing much, much better. And I know the foster did say that as soon as he got the doxy through him, which is the treatment for the Lyme disease, and he got on a pain med medicine for a little while, uh, he perked right up. So there he, there he is. Like as soon as he's feeling good, he's a completely different dog. Now we have weaned him off the pain meds and he's on a joint supplement every single day. Uh, and it, he doesn't appear to be in any pain, which is why we really want to get a good opinion from multiple vets to see if these surgeries are 100% necessary or if they're just recommended uh, or if he can be like this without pain is it better to just let him live his life at this point so we are going to get all that figured out but I really wanted you guys to see him he's a very very handsome dog beautiful coloring that's a very pale tan brindle with white with that smushy face he has a severe underbite his bottom teeth pretty much stick out all the time um, he has one bright blue eye and one bright light green eye just overall adorable his foster mom says that he is extremely snuggly. He loves to cuddle. He loves to just be up on the couch, be on your lap, be hanging out with you. He is crate trained. Very, very well behaved in his crate. He was crated all day while the family worked. So no concerns there. He had lived with another dog uh, and they got along great. They played. They roughhoused. I mean, they were best buddies. Uh, the only time she had any concerns, which this is mostly just her, she wouldn't let them like share toys at all ever, but they wanted to. They would want to sit there and literally chew on the same toy. So we definitely don't have any concerns about him living with other dogs as long as they want to play the same way he wants to play. Uh, she said he was good around kids, not particularly interested in them. Like he doesn't want to play with them or anything like that, but he was well behaved. We don't know for sure about cats, but based on his behavior, I don't really have any concerns about kitties. So I really do think he'll be a good dog for somebody if they're willing to be a little bit patient with us and with him, figuring, fully figuring out his medical issues. But I just, he's such a good boy and we're really ready to find him his forever home. His foster mom has been absolutely amazing. She loves him, he loves her, or he loves, she loves him, but we're ready to find his forever. time for Ask Ashley. This is Ashley, ACAPL.org. And today we are talking about the volunteer program. Oh, correct? right. Yes. So uh, I, I have noticed, just being in here, there seems to be more volunteers. How, how is that? Is it because of, well, I'm just going to say about because people graduating from high school, they need the points, but you got people here that look like they're like 40, 45 years old. They're not probably not graduating from high school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So our volunteer program has definitely grown. I would say just even since I started here. When I started here, there was maybe, maybe a handful of people that were consistent, regular mm -hmm. volunteers. You're right. We do always get people that need uh, volunteer hours for usually for school or for other programs they're in. Um, and we do get community service people as well, which is great. We're super appreciative for people that choose us when it comes to their community service hours. I think there's some cats around here. Yeah, it's a little, little loud in here today. Um, but as far as like 
you're right, grown adults that work full-time jobs that are taking time out of their, their free time to come here and spend time with our animals. I mean, it's just been exponential growth pretty much since I started, but definitely I would say within the last few months or so, uh, and I can't thank them enough. With our numbers the way they are, which is about 60, 70 dogs on site and about 30 cats, but specifically with the dogs, mm -hmm. um, staff doesn't have time to do anything pretty much besides clean and then appointments, so mm -hmm. helping adopters. Um, so that leaves pretty much no time to just do walking, going out into the play yard, anything that helps you learn who these animals are. That's That's been the hardest part. But because at the same time as our numbers have gone up, our volunteers have gone up, uh, that really has allowed us to still help the dogs get the exercise that they need. And when it comes to the kitties, we have had huge success with a couple of volunteers that have spent so much time with some of our shy kitties. If you come in here to the cat room, you might notice that some kitties have a spicy kitty mm -hmm. sign on them. Now sometimes, if a cat is really spicy and it came from an outdoor situation, we may deem them a rodent ranger. But if it came from an indoor situation, we really would like that cat to be in an indoor home again. So if they're spicy but it's only because they're scared, we really want to work with them. And same thing, our staff doesn't have too much time anymore. So our volunteers that just sit and talk and read to the cats and just very slowly hold the hand up through the kennel so they can start sniffing and, and you know, gradually getting closer and closer. Um, it, it's, I can't say how essential it is. So for all our species here, I mean, we've got a couple really dedicated rabbit volunteers as well that have helped some of our more shy rabbits come and learn to trust humans. Um, so it's just been, I'm just so extremely thankful because otherwise these dogs and cats would be just losing their minds here because we don't have as much time to spend with them. Spicy means that they're kind of a standoffish, aloof with, with people, right? Correct, and they may, they may give you a quick swat if you try to pet them okay. or something like that. So then if they're, they're just aren't going to look like that they're going to want anything to do with humans, they end up in barn cats, right? That's what the sure. rodent rangers are. Yeah, a rodent ranger is something that we dedicate that would be good, in a, or even like a shop, like a workshop mm -hmm. or something like that, that they'll hang out, be around, they still need humans to give them the food and shelter, but they're good on their own, they don't need to be your friend. Um, and you know what, we have had cats here that we designated as rodent rangers that then once the people brought them home were just absolute sweethearts and they brought them right in their house and they called us and they said, no, nope, no, nope, he's inside with us because he's so good. Um, and it just goes to show that the cats change just as much when they're out here as the dogs do. Maybe not all of them, but sometimes you never know what you're taking home and it's always for the better because they're happier once they're at home. So are you still, you're still doing the where you, a group meets on Saturday morning and goes to a local park? Yeah, definitely. So we're doing the third Saturday of every month, approximately. Uh, you can double check Facebook or our website to confirm those dates. But we just had one last weekend and it was a huge success. Um, we had about, I think there were five people plus me, so six dogs went out and they just all got along so great. Everybody's energy level was about the same. They sniffed, they said hi, but then they kept walking. Uh, everybody did excellent in the car and it was just a really fun time and I think it's a great way it's a great way for new volunteers to get pumped up but I'd really like to see some of our existing volunteers come and participate in that event because I think we could get a really big good group you know um, so that's one program that we're looking to grow we have events all summer like just about every single weekend we have different festivals right. and wineries and places that are inviting us to come and set up a stand and bring adoptables um i know this coming weekend we've got a pet supplies event and then it's it's we just have a lot going on this summer yeah, the, so the cops last weekend right the police officers they had something i don't remember that one but i know we had the goodwill bins here yeah. We had yeah. the Goodwill bins here last weekend as well. So yeah. we have so much cool stuff coming up. And we have even more that's like not released yet that's coming soon. Um, but if you're interested in volunteering, I'll give you um, our new volunteer coordinator. Her name is Lori. She's amazing. Uh, she'll get back to you as quick as possible if you apply. And if you are interested in helping with any of those events, which is a really cool way to attend the events as well, um, we are definitely looking for people to help out in shifts at different events. Um, cause we're, we're packed. We're fully, we're fully booked this summer. And you can still take 
uh, like a dog out, not with a group, but oh, yeah. I'm just gonna take a dog out and take him to. Uh, well, I did that once with. Then we went on the went to a park. Went a hike, yeah. Yeah, and then they very very delicately ate a McDonald's hamburger. <laughs> yeah, so we call those our doggy daycations, which those are really awesome because especially for some dogs who maybe haven't been off site yet with anybody, um, it's a really cool way to just see how they're gonna behave. And you can take them, any dog friendly park is acceptable. You could take them um, back to your house if you have a fenced in yard, just keep your animals separate, let the, let the APL dog roam the yard for a few minutes, take them to McDonald's, take them to if Whippy Dip. If you take an APL dog to Whippy Dip and tell them it's an APL dog, you get a free doggy Sunday for them. Mm. So shout out to the people of Whippy Dip because that is so awesome that they do that. They're right around the corner from us. Um, yeah, so we've got all kinds of options for different people, different ways to volunteer. Well, you consider that those dogs are in this cage a lot. They yes. can get bored. I get Absolutely. bored, they would get yeah. bored. <laughs> so, uh, they, they really need the input of uh, humans and other animals and new experiences and smells and everything. Absolutely. So this big man down here is one of our big talkers, so don't be surprised if he starts talking over me because I'm telling his story wrong. Um, yeah, he, he's definitely our most vocal boy in here right now, which is so funny because usually our most vocal cat is a female. Typically, our fe <laughs> yeah. Typically females in heat tend to be the loudest in here, um, but luckily we don't have any of those right now as far as I know. So Mr. Tom Petty is our loudest kitty in here uh, he makes it very well known that he is not happy to be in this kennel now oh he may not be happy but he's a good boy about it he, he's 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 putting up with it for the most part he doesn't make a huge mess or anything like that he goes in his litter box I unfortunately do not know his story or where he came from I'm assuming he was some kind of you know an owner surrender from a situation where the owner just could no longer take care of him because he's a very sweet boy uh, he's not fixed yet so if you are interested in him you can still apply you can come and meet him he's right here in, in our cat living room um, but he just won't get fixed for another couple of weeks maybe so you could either wait a little bit or you could take him home and bring him back it's kind of up to you but I do yes I do believe he lived with other kitties because we have a couple other cats with a similar themed name as far as celebrities go. So I have no concerns with him with other kitties. He's a full grown adult orange boy, very handsome, very talkative. I hope the talkativeness stays after he gets fixed because I think it's very cute. And now I'm going to try to open the door. And if he runs out, if you'll see his little note right here, it says he's a door dasher. So he may run out, and then you can all laugh at me, because I'll have to try to catch him. What about the pending medical clearance? Uh, so that's because he's not fixed yet. Oh, okay. That's all. Hi, buddy. They put that out here so when he reads that, he doesn't realize he's going to be yeah. having surgery for that. <laughs> can I pick you up? Oh, no. I told you he was going to try to Look at that big orange boy. He's looking for other kitties. He's like, yeah. Well, he listens to them all the time. He wants to see what they look like. He loved on me. Oh. That was precious. He doesn't look like Tom Petty. <laughs> Sorry. So this older lady is Rosetta, and I know for a fact that she was an owner surrender. She did come in with another cat, another female. Uh, they got along very well. I believe that female girl is over at is over at Pet Supplies Plus right now. Uh, but the thing that makes Rosetta special is that she is front declaw. Now I'll tell you that a lot of vets will not front declaw cats anymore. We do not ever front declaw any cats here. But every once in a while we get people who really want a declawed cat. Here she is. <laughs> she is on the older side, so you you know, 
you know, you may not have as long with her as if you got a kitten or a one-year-old cat. But she's litter broken. She's extremely clean. I mean, she does not move anything around in here. I don't even really know if she touches her toys. Maybe a little bit every once in a while, but very laid back for the most part. Just really wants love. She definitely could use uh, a good grooming and mostly just a comb. I don't really think she needs a bath. But just making sure she gets regularly combed so that she doesn't get any mats. Um, yeah, but otherwise, I mean, she's healthy. We have no health concerns for her. She is fixed. She's ready to go. So if you're somebody out there who wants a cat, but you really want to keep your furniture safe and everything, I do understand the reasons why people want it. Um, but it's not humane for kitties. But because hers are already done, we're going to go ahead and adopt her out, obviously. We tried putting the claws back and it didn't work, right? Unfortunately, so, okay. no way to put them back on there. No, no super glue strong enough to hold them back on. She's got long hair, too. It's, it's she, interesting. And she's looking. a gorgeous cat. Yeah. She really is. So I'm hoping she gets out here soon because she is just too sweet. And she's really ready to go and get some love in a forever home. Good boy. 
Until the day 